Well, let me welcome you to the home of the Cowgirls, historic Gallagher Iba Arena. And today is a great OSU day as we welcome a new family into the OSU family. Today we officially announced that we have a new head coach of the Cowgirls, and she is a person that was born into the game of basketball. You see, she was born to play it, she was born to coach it, and now we know that she was born to coach it right here with the Cowgirl basketball program. Let's begin by giving a warm Gallagher Iber Arena welcome. I kind of, we already kind of did, but let's do it for JC Hoyt, her husband Daniel, and the entire family. Thank you all very much. Coach, I want you to know that your program is very near and dear to my heart. You see, as a student, I started my career with OSU Athletics with Cowgirl Basketball, and I've been calling games now for 33 years in this historic arena, and I can't wait to see what we have in store under your guidance. So, you know, you'll be coaching on the same white maple floor that legendary coaches Henry Iba, we call him Mr. Iba here, and Eddie Sutton, they coached right here. And now you will coach right here. And we're so excited to see what the future holds. So we're looking forward to it. So welcome. All right, now I get to introduce a guy who is also from a basketball family. And I think you will see by the look in his eyes and by the spring in his step that he believes he signed his number one recruit. Please welcome our athletic director, Chad Weiberg. Thank you for being here today on this great day. Um, I'd like to uh, start out by just recognizing a few of the university leadership that is here with us today. Um, we have with us Regent Calvin Anthony and his wife Linda, front row here. And Regent Rick Davis, front row as well. I know that Dr. Shrum, President Shrum, sends her regards. She wishes that she could be here, but uh, she is in Oklahoma City um, in meetings and, and important meetings, I'm sure. But uh, she has spent time with Coach Hoyt um, and uh, is excited as we all are. So I'd like to also take this time to again thank Coach Littell for his leadership of Cowgirl basketball and his service to Oklahoma State University. We appreciate his efforts and stewardship of this program for the past 11 years. I'd like to thank the Cowgirl basketball players for being here today and for their dedication to this program and for your patience and support as we've worked through this process. I'd also like to thank all of the former Cowgirl basketball players for their continued support of the program. At Oklahoma State, we have a long history of competitive excellence at the highest levels of college athletics as demonstrated by the 52 national championship banners hanging above us here in Gallagher Iba Arena. We are committed to providing the best experience possible for, for all our student athletes and that experience includes the opportunity to earn a life-changing degree, the opportunity to compete for championships, and the chance to be surrounded by the best possible people to lead, coach, teach, and mentor them. And that commitment is for both men's and women's athletics. That commitment is demonstrated in the success of our women's programs and our student athletes, and we are fortunate to have some of the best coaches in the country leading, of, leading our programs, many of whom are here today, and I appreciate them being here. Oklahoma State is currently ranked in the top 10 in the nation in women's tennis, women's golf, softball, and equestrian. We finished the women's cross country season with a Big 12 championship and 13th in the country. And just last week, OSU's Taylor Rowe won an individual national championship in indoor track. In addition to this competitive success, thanks to our incredible donors that share our commitment to women's athletics and have generously invested to make it possible, our teams compete in some of the absolute best facilities in the country. The Michael and Ann Greenwood Tennis Center, where we will host the 2024 NCAA National Championships. 
the Atherton Family Arena and Pedigo Hole Equestrian Center, Neil Patterson Stadium, which I believe is one of the best soccer stadiums in the country and is the best women's only soccer team or soccer stadium in the country. The Griner Family Cross Country Course, where we hosted the 2020 NCAA National Championships and will again host the 2022 NCAA National Championships. Carson Creek, that for over 25 years has been one of the best collegiate golf courses in the country. And of course, the original white maple floor that we are standing on here in historic Gallagher Iba Arena, where we find ourselves for this occasion today. When we started our search for the next head coach of Cowgirl Basketball, we wanted to find first someone who had a vision for what Cowgirl Basketball can be. We wanted to find a program builder. We were looking for someone whose personal integrity was very important to them and, would who, and would, who would demonstrate that to our student athletes in the way they live their life, lead our players, and run our program. We were looking for someone with a great energy that would represent the very best of Oklahoma State throughout women's college basketball. We wanted a relentless recruiter with experience in identifying and attracting Big 12 caliber talent. We wanted a leader. We have found all of that and more in J.C. Hoyt. She is the daughter of parents who have raised four girls and have devoted their lives and professional careers to developing and leading young people. Her dad, Scott, she credits with demonstrating how to serve and lead. Her mom, Shelly, is a legendary high school girls basketball coach in Kansas, whose career includes state record 107 consecutive wins and four straight state titles. So JC has been around a lot of basketball and a lot of winning. Scott and Shelly, thank you for being here with us today. And we look forward to seeing you often here in Gallagher Iba Arena. I also, also here are JC's sisters, but I think I will let her introduce them to you. As an assistant coach at K-State, JC helped recruit talented Big 12 athletes to Manhattan, and as a head coach at Kansas City, she built a culture and transformed that program into a consistently competitive team, including winning the school's first ever conference championship. The more I'm around her, the more convinced I am that we are fortunate to have her joining the OSU family. I know everyone will love getting to know her and will want to do all that you can uh, to help support her vision of what Cowgirl basketball can be. I can't wait to get started. So it is my pleasure to introduce to you the next leader of OSU Cowgirl basketball, J.C. Hoyt. This is an incredibly special day for me. Um, just really, there are no words. Um, looking out at all these faces and standing on this floor, um, you, don't, you don't get here, you don't get to a place like this without um, an incredible support system and a group of people who believe in you and give you opportunities. I wanna start by uh, first of all, thank, thanking you for being here with me on such a big and special day. Um, and also just want to start by um, acknowledging the people who really have been with me uh, since day one. And um, I'm looking at those people right now, uh, Team Hoyt, as we refer to ourselves in our family group chat. Um, so uh, I want to start just, um, Dad, uh, the best girl dad <laughs> that I can imagine. Um, literally taking plane rides, train rides, car rides to every game that I ever played in, uh, following our team, even as I coach now. Um, 
just thank you for everything and, and your support. Um, Mom, we're doing it, Mom. Um, and you started this and you've, you've paved the way for me and um, I would not be here uh, with the blueprint that I have for coaching and investing in players' lives. Um, so thank you for that. My sisters, Karina, Taryn, Tabitha, I know you're watching, um, just my biggest cheerleaders. Um, I, I love you guys and um, just thank you so much for all your support. And um, lastly, over here for my family, my, my husband, Daniel. Um, I know it takes a special person to marry a coach and a coach at this level. And um, I, this, this, is, this is our job. And um, you have been amazing for me. I, I cannot imagine a more supportive husband. And I just want to thank you for not just being supportive, but always pushing me and encouraging me and never holding me back from chasing my dreams ever. Um, in fact, quite the opposite, um, pushing me and um, encouraging me that I can do whatever I set my mind to. And I cannot wait for these girls to uh, get to just experience, you know, being a part of our family. And um, I thank you so much for just taking such a, such a, a great investment in what I do, but also who I get to do it with. So I love all of you very much. Um, now I want to specifically address the people here at Oklahoma State that have believed in me and given me opportunities. Um, I'll start with, with you, Chad, um, an incredible athletic director who I want to talk a little bit more about moving forward. Um, early on, I got the pleasure of, of meeting Reed Sigmund, Brandon Meyer, Karen Hancock, and of course, the fiery, stylish, president that leads our university, Dr. Shrum. Um, let, let me put it this way. Being a young head coach, I've gotten the question a lot throughout my, my career of, you know, what, what's, what's your dream job? What's your dream job? And I learned really young, unfortunately, through having to overcome hurdles and obstacles and and different challenges that, you know, I, I can make my own plans and, and I can have a dream job, but ultimately God is the author of my story and I don't really get to make my plans. He writes them for me. So with that being said, I've always been really conscious to never really get caught up in having a dream job um, and really just knowing that if I work incredibly hard and treat people incredibly well, that good things will happen. Then enter Oklahoma State and Chad Weibert. And all of a sudden, I start realizing, okay, maybe I do have a dream job. Maybe I do, because every conversation that I had with the people that I mentioned, every conversation, I, I just got a, a burning desire, a fire in my soul that would just keep burning brighter and brighter and more intensely every conversation with them. I mean, I'll go back to Dr. Dr. Shrum, you know, I mean, to have a strong female president who, A, cares as much about shoes as I do, and B, is just as fiery as I am, but most importantly, who truly cares and invests in athletics. I mean, that's a dream. That is a dream to get to have a, a, an administrative team that so clearly cares about student athletes as more than just athletes, but as people, and um, who've made it very clear to me that they're willing to invest in whatever ways it takes to help us be successful and pour into these young ladies' lives. Um, that's a dream come true for me. And most importantly, to get to work for an athletic director who so clearly aligns with the things that I value most, faith, family, relationships, winning and, and striving to win at the absolute highest level, but also knowing that we can do that the right way. 
with integrity. And I am so excited to get to work with all of you guys and learn from you and be under your leadership. Um, and then at, I, I had a great uh, conversation even with, with Coach Boynton um, before I got the call from Chad. And, and that was really kind of the final bow on the present for me because when you have a men's basketball coach who publicly professes his faith and cares about his players the way that he does, that's special. That's really, really special. And that also really aligns with me and the things that I value. So all of a sudden now I, d I do have a dream job and I realize it's right here at Oklahoma State and all those people that I talked about are a dream team. A dream team that I knew I wanted to so badly be a part of. So thank you to all of you guys. Um, I cannot wait to work with you and for you. And um, I know that we're gonna accomplish really great things here. So a couple things um, I just wanna share with y'all about just, you know, kind of understanding me and um, who, who I am and, and what I'm about and what you can expect from me. Um, outside of my faith, the most important thing for me is family. And family to me, man, that's, I, I don't take it lightly. Family to me, and as you guys all know, being a part of your own families, th those are the people that you go through, the highs, the lows, the people who are always by your side, the people who you will do anything for. That's very important to me, and that is a mindset and the culture that I want to have as I lead this program, doing it with family. Because it's not just me, it's us. And I don't just draw that line with my players, with the staff, with the support staff, uh, with the people in the athletic department. Family to me is all of you who are in here. And I'm gonna tell y'all something. We're, we're striving for great things here. We are striving for excellence. We are striving for conference championships. We're striving to be playing at this time in March on a national stage. And I can't do that alone. We can't do that alone. That takes you guys being a part of that. That takes you guys being right here in the stands supporting us, supporting us in whatever ways you possibly can. And trust me, there's a lot of ways that you can you can help us move that needle. Um, but I don't want to do it alone. I want to do it with each and every one of you. And for those who are watching, um, I cannot wait to connect with more people in the community. Um, I'm incredibly passionate about um, making every little girl, every high school girl, every middle school girl who likes or loves the game of basketball. I'm incredibly passionate about growing that love and passion for them and doing so by putting a product on the floor that they can look up to and strive to be like. And that to me is family. So that is one thing um, that you need to know about me and my approach to everything um, is that I really want to involve you guys. I, I need your help doing this. And um, man, I, I just really think this could be it, it already is a special family, but I think we can take it to another level. Outside of family, um, I want you to know that no one in this arena is going to have a higher standard for this program and our success than me. No one will be harder or more critical no one is going to want to win more than I will. I am a fierce and intense competitor. And I believe that my players will follow me in that. Um, you're going to be able to uh, come to games and see a group of girls who not only loves each other and fights for one another, but fights in a way that we're playing to win. And maybe even more importantly, we're playing not to lose. Because I'll tell you, I'd, I'm a terrible loser. <laughs> I love to win, but man, I hate to lose. And we are gonna 
live by a standard that uh, anything less than your best, it's not cutting it here. I believe that God has given us all gifts and abilities, and um, I don't take that lightly. I believe that I am uh, to steward those gifts and abilities and help draw that out of our players in a way that gets the most out of them. And that's where I, I really believe we can take this program to another level by doing that, by competing fiercely, intensely, not being outworked, not being um, out hustled, being the first on the floor to every 50-50 ball. Um, that's the style of basketball that you're going to watch here. And um, I think that you guys will be really proud of that. Lastly, uh, what you can expect uh, from, from me as the leader of this program is a person who, of course, we're doing everything we can um, as a family to compete at the highest level. Um, but it is very, very important for me to acknowledge who I am and where I stand and why I stand here um, because I would not be standing here if I did not have coaches, particularly female coaches, who poured into me and invested in me as more than a basketball player. I wouldn't be standing here uh, as the person that I am with the faith that I have, the confidence that I have. I had women pour into me that taught me it's okay to be feminine and want to wear lipstick and high heels, but also be insanely competitive. They taught me, be who you are and don't apologize for it. They instilled in me a self-confidence and belief that now I feel is my duty to pass on to these young ladies, to the recruits that I get to talk to, to all those little girls that I mentioned earlier. Um, that's what you're going to get at Oklahoma State women's basketball is a leader who invests in people first, students second, players third. But it is without the biggest goal of mine that whenever a player leaves our program, they have that same confidence and self-belief that I have. In fact, I want them to have more. I want them to walk out the doors with rings on our fingers, diplomas in hands, and a whole lot of confidence. Confidence to go out and be a boss in whatever you do, whatever that is. I can't wait to just connect with each and every one of you and um, I am so thankful for all of you for showing up on this very special day for me. I hope that you are as excited as I am about all the things that I've talked about. I think it's going to be a heck of a ride. And um, I just so appreciate each and every one of you and your belief in me. I cannot wait to win a lot of basketball games on this floor and do it the right way with each and every one of you by my side. So thank you um, just so much for everything. Gratitude is the word that just keeps running through my mind, um, the gratitude that I have on so many levels. So thank you. I can't wait to be your next coach. <laughs>
everyone here can count on getting that energy and getting it consistently. Um, but that's, that's, I don't know any other way um, to coach, so you can definitely count on that. Hi, I'm Kelly Hines from the Tulsa World. Um, being from this region and having coached in the Big 12, how did that um, kind of play into this being a good fit for you? Well, I've been incredibly blessed with, um, you know, an opportunity to already have been in the Big 12. And a, a little bit about that, you know, I, I was at Kansas State under very similar circumstances, uh, circumstances where uh, new coaching staff came in and um, the program uh, was looking to go in a, a direction that, um, you know, was was raising a standard and getting back to a standard that had previously existed, but that really wasn't there at the time. And um, I was able to to work for a, an amazing coaching staff and, and kind of, again, get that blueprint for um, how to do it and how to do it in the Big 12 specifically. So in just those three short years that I spent at K-State, you know, we, we got there in a time when um, the standard wasn't quite being met and then when I left, um, you know, being a, a top 25 program and playing into the NCAA tournament. So it has prepared me without a doubt and um, just really thankful for the things that I learned and uh, a little part of that blueprint of what's going to make it work here. Thank you. Hi, I'm Hallie Hart with the Stillwater News Press. Nice to meet you and welcome to Oklahoma State. Thank you, Hallie. So I wanted to ask, after realizing that this was kind of your dream job, then where were you in that moment when you got the call from Chad Weiberg and how would you describe what that was like? Yeah, so life has a funny way of humbling you, Hallie, because um, I took the call outside um, so I wouldn't be distracted with all the March Madness games that were going on in our household. And um, I remember just, you know, kind of taking a moment and um, being overwhelmed and shedding some tears, just kind of sharing that moment, you know, with, with God and um, just, again, gratitude, you know, for everything that had been happening. Um, and then my sister's dog ran down the street and I had to chase the dog down the street. So it, it's just funny how life humbles you. You know, you think, oh, I've made it. And, uh, you know, what a dream come true. And then I have to chase the dog down the street before I could tell anyone else. <laughs> Hi, I'm Scott Wright with the Oklahoman. Uh, JC, I've got a question for you, but also for Chad, if uh, if you wouldn't mind chiming in on this. Um, you guys overlapped briefly at at Kansas State, and I was just curious what the uh, you know how well you knew each other, and and if if that affected this uh, this decision or or gave you some comfort in uh, in knowing that you had someone familiar. Yeah, our our time did overlap, um, and to be honest, you know, um, Chad was someone that I knew of. Um, didn't, of course we had met each other, but really hadn't spent a lot of time together. Um, and so what I did know was that he was a man who was very well respected across the department, a man of great integrity, um, and just someone that, you know, really, uh, again, believed in, in doing things the way that I believe in doing things. Um, and, and that's all I really knew, to be honest. So it has been uh, really neat for me to see things kind of come back full circle. Uh, yeah, that's right, um, Scott. We did overlap there. And, uh, you know, you have to remember that that was a number of years ago. And uh, I was in a different position there at K-State, and she was in a different position there. But I, I just know this, that um, you know, I cannot even remember specific um, interactions or conversations that I had with her, but I can remember how I felt after I had those interactions with her. She's just somebody that has that about her. She makes you feel great, feel you know like your day is going to be great when you've, um, when you've had that interaction with her. And so that just always, you know, stuck out at me and, that, and, a, and probably is a reason why I've just continued to kind of follow her path and follow her career um, as she, you know, was continued her assistant coaching career there at K-State and then got the, the opportunity at Kansas City, um, you know, watched what she was doing there and, and uh, 
you know, she she uh, started to have great great success there at Kansas City. So um, it was definitely definitely part of it. Yeah, Barry Trammell with the Oklahoman. Uh, you've lived most of your life one state away from Stillwater. Yeah. Looking at this program over the years, did did you follow it? Did you think about it? What what are your thoughts about OSU basketball when you when you look back? Yeah, of course I followed it. You know, I mean, you grew up in Kansas, and that's Big 12 territory. So um, grew up having a great knowledge um, of just the Big 12 in general and uh, of Oklahoma State as well. Um, I know that it's always been a place that I felt really um, I, could, I could relate to. You know, I could relate to the fan base. Um, I'm a small-town girl. I, I grew up walking across the street to the gym, and on Sundays, church was next door to my house, you know, I'd, um, so Stillwater has always been a place where, um, you know, you can, you can turn on the TV and you see, wow, that's a, that's a passionate fan base and, uh, a place where I just felt, um, really was a good fit for me and kind of who I am. Um, but just the, the tradition, um, the success that, that the women's basketball program has had, you know, as a basketball person, um, of course you, you follow that and are mindful of that. So, um, it's again, just, you know, been such a, a neat thing for me to kind of having grown up following it and having a great respect for it, um, now get to be in this position. What are your plans to recruit some of the players, you know, currently on your roster? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I can't wait. That's that's why I do what I do, right, is just the, the relationships and um, getting to, to know them and um, help them get to know me. So that's really kind of the next step for me is, is having that opportunity to spend time with them and, um, you know, share more about how I want to do things here and um, how we are going to do things and uh, making sure that, you know, their their beliefs and philosophy um, align with mine and, and that that's going to be a good fit. So really the next step for me, um, I got to have a, a great team meeting with them last night and uh, that was that was really awesome for me to get to have that time with them. But I can't wait to have more time uh, so that we can kind of take those next steps. I'm Sam Hutchins with the Ocali. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure where you are in the process of shaping your coaching staff, but I'm just wondering if you expect much turnover or change in that area. Yeah, you know, everything has been so fast and furious. I really have not gotten to that point yet. Um, what I know is that I want to surround myself with people who are like-minded, um, but that can also challenge me and, uh, you know, complement the things that um, I know I need um, in order to get where we're trying to go. So um, I, I want to do that quickly. However, I do not want to rush that um, because I think that um, it, it's just incredibly important to make sure that you're surrounding yourself with, with the right people. Um, so for me right now, that just looks like, um, you know, evaluating and, and having conversations and um, kind of just taking that as it comes. How do you plan to, you know, engage the student body? However that looks here, whatever I need to do, I'm going to do it. Um, you know, I, you mentioned energy earlier and, um, being around people gives me energy. I, I love getting to be around people and learning about people. Um, I can't wait to engage with the student body and, um, you know, that that's incredibly important. I mean, if you guys, follow basketball, you know how important that is to have the student section full. And um, I, you know, I, I just find myself being energized um, by getting to spend time around young people. And um, I, I think that it's, uh, wh whatever that looks like here, you know, I, whether that's going out and um, connecting with them on campus or getting them here, um, I do want them to know that they are a very, very crucial piece into what we're trying to accomplish here. Um, I, I want to have, you know, a, a home game atmosphere that 
people fear coming to play us, um, you know, and, and that is largely in part to our students. And um, I can't wait to just, you know, get them fired up and I'm going to be there fired up with them. And uh, that will be something that we definitely feed off of. Spencer Tills with Fox 23. Is there a philosophy or style of basketball that you're wanting to kind of put in play? Yeah, there is. Uh, you know, so I played and um, I, I think that my philosophy is kind of shaped by the coaches that I've played for and, and the way that I love to play. To play. And uh, it, that style is a, a fast, up-tempo style. Um, you know, if you look back at, at the teams that I coached in Kansas City. You know, we we scored a lot of points. Uh, we shot a lot of threes. Uh, we we really want to push the ball in transition, uh, but of course you cannot do that if you don't play defense and get stops on defense and rebound the ball in a way that allows you to play fast. Um, so philosophy wise, we definitely want to play an up tempo style, and uh, I'm I'm excited to find the recruits who want to play that style. I think that our players will really enjoy playing that style. They're going to have a lot of freedom, a lot of freedom to, you know, make plays on their own and um, have a green light if they've earned it, if they've earned it, uh, to shoot the ball. Um, but no, it's it, it's going to be a fun style, I think, to, to watch and to play and to recruit to. Something that stands out about your intro press release is, of course, talking about your inspiration from your mom. And I noticed it said how she learned to navigate what was a man's world, you said. And so I wonder what did you kind of take away from how she navigated that and showed that it's a woman's world, too? Well, I think the biggest thing that I learned from her um, was just to never back down. And uh, there might be things that come across your life, um, whether that's, you know, male, female, or the color of your skin, or um, the, the things that happen to you throughout the course of your life where, you know, we all could fall victim to that. And uh, I mean, my mom grew up without having a lot. Um, and I watched her really um, just always rise above, rise above, rise above work hard, work hard, work hard, and um, never back down. So those are the things that, um, you know, she's just been a, a huge inspiration to me in, in the way that she's lived her life, um, not just coaching, but the way that she's lived her life um, that I've really drawn a lot from. Yeah, a, a couple things I want to say to you. Again, just thank you for being here. Um, I, I really hope that you will uh, be two feet in for us. I am clearly two feet in. If you can see, see my outfit, I'm all in. Um, so, uh, you know, just uh, I think that's if we're going to have the success that, that we're striving for, it's, it's going to take that. So please um, buy your season tickets and, uh, you know, t I, I look forward to getting out and connecting with you guys. And um, I will not be shy on telling you ways that you can help and support us. And then I'm going to hold you accountable to doing that. But the first thing you can do without a doubt, you know, buy your season tickets and um, just continue to show us support uh, by showing up and, and being present. Okay. Thank you. I think we can all agree that she is rocking that orange power outfit she's got on today for sure. So, uh, Coach, you were talking about your dream job, and you heard, I don't know if you heard that loud thunder. I think that was God saying you're welcome. So uh, we are so excited that you're here, and I know we're preaching to the choir because these people – these people basically have season tickets. I'm hoping some people that see this tonight will get their season tickets. And let's just spread the word out there that uh, uh, we're excited about the future under our new head coach. And let's one more time give it up for her and her family. Thank you. Welcome, Jason. Thank you all for being here, and go Pokes.